So it is the morning after the night before. For those of you who didn't know, I did actually go to the England-Brazil game yesterday, which is why your reaction is coming at you this morning rather than last night when it normally comes out. And to be honest, the only two words I have to describe yesterday is tired and frustrated. Firstly, because all of the trains into London were cancelled from where I come from. So we had to drive to a separate train station to get a different train. So that took a lot more time than it normally does, both getting there and getting back. So tired and frustrated. And then the actual on-field performance as well, absolutely horrendous. Like, Brazil are a good team. We know Brazil have good quality players in certain areas of the pitch. But I think we should be beating that Brazil team. You look at it, they've got young, inexperienced players in that team. Granted, we have a few young, inexperienced players in our team as well. But the majority of our young, inexperienced players... I've still been playing at the high level in the Premier League and in Europe. So I just don't think there's any excuses for the sort of performance that we've put out last night. Because again, it just constantly highlights Gareth Southgate's lack of ability to generate a good performance from this England side. Like, you know, you've got to look at the actual personnel we have got on the pitch. There is arguably world-class players in seven or eight of the 11 positions on the pitch. And the others around them aren't exactly that bad either. And we're just, we've just got nothing to show for it. Like, I was at the game in 2017 that was nil-nil between England and Brazil. In that game, our midfield partnership was Eric Dyer and Jade Livermore. To come away with a nil-nil by playing safe and playing possession to keep the ball away from Brazil and get a nil-nil result with Eric Dyer and Jade Livermore in midfield, I'd, I'd say that's acceptable. It's not 2017 anymore, Gareth. We've got some of the best players in the world. Our midfield was Bellingham, Rice and Conor Gallagher. Now, I'll get to Gallagher shortly because he was well below par. But to not get anything out of Declan Rice and Jude Bellingham, to leave Foden, Gordon and in particular Ollie Watkins essentially starved of service for the majority of the match is unacceptable and that can't be on the players it can't be because we see these players week in week out Foden has been arguably the best player in the Premier League this season Anthony Gordon is in double figures for Newcastle this season Ollie Watkins is the second stop scorer in the Premier League and the top assister in the Premier League he only touched the ball 20 times in 90 minutes Yes, he had one really good chance, but I thought that was good defending from the Brazil defender. When I saw it live, I thought it was a bad miss from Watkins, but I've seen the highlight now. And it's a really good tackle from the Brazil defender just to lift it up before Watkins shoots so it comes off his left shin rather than his left boot. Otherwise, it would have been 1-0 England. But other than that, I, mean, I felt so sorry for Ollie Watkins. He ran his socks off last night. He really, really did. He was making loads of bursts in behind, trying to pull defenders out wide to create space. But... The passes just weren't coming. And the reason why you know this is a Gareth Southgate issue is because of Esri Konsa. And I know it sounds, sounds like a bit of a daft comment to make, but Esri Konsa has been playing right back for Aston Villa now for about six months. So many times, if he can't feed the ball into Douglas Louise to play the little spin in behind to Watkins, he'll play the diagonal ball down the channel to Ollie Watkins to stretch that defence, to create the space for the likes of McGinn and Tielemans and whoever to then make the burst in the middle. Watkins is always pulling away and the likes of Konza will play those passes to get him in. Not once did Konza play that ball to Watkins. I thought Ezri Konza had a fantastic game. Coming in for Carl Walker up against Vinicius Jr., I thought Ezri Konza was fantastic at the job he was asked to do. But going forward, the amount of times that he would pick the ball up, travel to the halfway line, you could see the space in front of him and he would sort of think about it. He'd look at the pass and then just stop, turn, and either play it back inside to Rice or back to Stones. That is on Gareth Southgate, because he still can't get it out of his head that we have the, one of the best attacking teams in the world, one of the most creative lineups in the world, and they just need to be unleashed. And what's really, really worrying is that in his post-match interview, he said he was happy at how the defence controlled the game. So... This is the problem. We're just never going to achieve anything when he still believes this is how we're supposed to be playing. Like, 
it, it, I just, I don't get it. I really don't get it. How, like I say, how you can have the likes of Bellingham, Foden, and that all on the pitch, and just tell them to contain. Just make sure you keep on the ball. The chances will come. We basically stifled ourselves by just not being creative. And I've seen people already talking online about, you know, Foden was tucking in. And we were saying it ourselves during the game. The amount of times Gordon would come inside and Foden would come inside. And basically, there was just then nowhere to go. No one was making overlapping runs. No one was creating space around the outside. You know, and we were saying like, well, when Foden comes in for Man City, De Bruyne makes the run around the outside. Or when Gordon comes in, the likes of Bruno Gimaraes and Isaac will pull out what. And they'll all sort of return. It just wasn't happening. Because Gareth Southgate has told these players, you stay in your shape, you come in to try and create the little chances when they come. And it's just unacceptable. It's absolutely unacceptable. And to be honest, I think probably only Declan Rice gets a 7 out of 10 for yesterday's performance. I thought Declan Rice had a really good game. Just He's so consistent. He's an absolute machine in midfield. And he didn't stop trying. He was trying to get on the ball. He was trying to create stuff whenever he could. But there was just nothing for him because there was just no movement. There was just nothing being offered because Gareth Southgate has told them to just stay in this shape and wait for the opportunities to come. It's just, oh, just so, as I said, tired and frustrating. It's so hard to watch England at the moment when you see this abundance of attacking talent and just gets absolutely wasted. And then I'll come to the poor performances. And unfortunately, this is going to sound like I'm being biased or anti-Chelsea. The two poor performers were the two Chelsea players, Conor Gallagher and Ben Chilwell. I thought Chilwell had a really poor game. He got beat too many times on the right-hand side by Rafinha. He lost loads of headers in that area of the pitch as well. Some of his defensive clearances were out into dangerous areas. His passing was poor. Again, he wasn't overlapping enough. Like, he was the attacking fullback. Ezri Contra is a right back who, sorry, is a centre back that's playing right back. It's not his job to overlap Phil Foden. Ben Chilwell, on a couple of occasions, got round the outside of Anthony Gordon. But I actually think Joe Gomez overlapped Rashford in the last 15 minutes more than Chilwell overlapped, um, overlapped Gordon. But again, we were losing by that point. By which point, now the shackles are off because, oh my God, we're losing. Maybe we should try attacking and being a bit more creative all of a sudden. I thought Chilwell was poor. And then Conor Gallagher. I mean, the stats have come out this morning that Conor Gallagher, in 75 minutes, completed 24 passes. Kobe Mainu, in 15 minutes, completed 20 passes. So, in quite literally a quarter of the... Not even a quarter, a fifth of the time. Then a fifth of the time that Kobe Mainu was on the pitch, he nearly completed as many passes as Conor Gallagher because Gallagher just ran around and did nothing. He won a few free kicks, don't get me wrong. He sort of got on the ball and fell over, tried to win a penalty, dived, probably should have been booked for diving. But the, the output from Gallagher was just absolutely shambolic. He just did not do enough. And then Kobe Mainu comes on, all of a sudden, there's a little bit more action in the midfield. He's showing for the ball, he wants to get on it, make a turn, make a turn. Again, I'm a Man United fan, so obviously I want Kobe to do well. But I think everyone could see that in those 15 minutes... He did more for the England team than Conor Gallagher did in 75. And again, you've got to look at Gareth Southgate and say, what has he seen in training to suggest that Conor Gallagher should be playing ahead of Kobe Mainu? I just, I don't get it. And then we'll have to talk about the goal because it is a horrendous goal. Lewis Dunk with the mistake, and it is a mistake. I thought he looked quite poor when he came on. I thought Maguire had a decent game. However, he then made his own mistake and was lucky not to be punished for that. So that kind of ruined what was a good performance from Maguire because Brazil should have scored off of his mistake. But Lewis Dunk came on, didn't really offer a lot, heads it straight to Andreas Pereira, great ball in behind. Pickford caught in two minds, another mistake from him, unfortunately, because again, I thought he had a fairly decent game as well. Jordan Pickford, distribution was good, made good saves when required, including making the save from Vinicius Jr., albeit the fact that he's been caught in two minds and Endrick puts the ball in the back of the net. Some controversy about offside. I think it's on. But like I say, you then go to the post-match interview. Gareth Southgate says, I was happy with the performance. We controlled the game for the first 75 minutes and then one moment's gone against us and we've lost 1-0 and that's international football at the highest level. Gareth, we should have lost by two or three. Paqueta hit the post. 
Vinicius should have scored the first one on one in the first half. If it weren't for the fact that he scuffed the shot, Carl Walker wouldn't have made it back to clear it off the line. We should have lost 3-0. Like, like I said, we had one decent chance, the Watkins chance, but that was a good tackle. It wasn't a bad miss, it was a good tackle. You can make an argument that the free kick where Gordon hits it at the goalkeeper is potentially another miss as well, but I think that was a really difficult chance to take. So, we've had two half chances to Brazil's three guilt edge chances. So, we should have lost the game. So, it wasn't balanced. We weren't the better team. We didn't control the game because we should have lost. But Gareth Southgate still thinks we were the better team in that match. So... I just don't see where we go from here. Like, if this is how we're going to play against the good teams in this tournament coming up, we're not going to beat the good teams in this tournament again because the greatest generation of young English talent we've possibly ever produced is being wasted by a manager who still thinks the best way to play football is to play safe. Just let them play. Unleash the talent we've got available to us. And look, like I say, I'm a Manchester United fan. If Ineos think Gareth Southgate is going to do a better job than Eric Ten Hag, oh, we could be in massive trouble there. But I don't know. We'll see how we do against Belgium in a few days' time. Belgium themselves aren't a very good team at the moment. Lukaku plays well for them. But De Bruyne's not going to be in the team. So, realistically... We should be beating Belgium pretty comfortably. Player for player, we should have a much better team than Belgium. But, again, we'll play safe. We'll contain. We'll wait for our moments. The best attacking players in world football won't be allowed to express themselves. And I imagine we'll lose to Belgium as well. And, look, we're not going to get a new manager before the Euros. I hope and I pray that we're going to get a new manager the moment the Euros has finished, going into the World Cup in America, where this young generation are going to be hitting their peak. I just hope that if that does happen, it doesn't mean he becomes Manchester United manager. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. Just another absolutely disgraceful performance from England. Solely to blame Gareth Southgate once again. He needs to go. But unfortunately, it's going to be at the expense of yet another international tournament campaign. Thank you very much for watching.